Hello everybody, I'm Naomi Witzke and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be painting this piece, which was inspired by this beautiful picture on Pixabay, and I will link that down below in the description so that you can access the reference photo and print it yourself. And um, what I did is I printed it so that it would be 11 by 14, and then I've got my 12 by 16 watercolor block right here taped off to 11 by 14. And also all the materials that I'm using today will be linked down below as well so that you can find those. But whatever you have in similar colors, good quality paper if you have it, will do just fine. So let's get started. Okay, for materials today, we'll be using three paint colors, all by Daniel Smith, quinacridone coral, quinacridone gold, and phthalo blue red shade. We'll be using a couple of pencils just to get the outline drawing on. You can use just a regular pencil. I used an HB and a 2B. A little bit of table salt for some special effects in the foreground. And then my paper is uh, 300 pound cold press Arsh. You can use any good quality watercolor paper that you have. 140 pound is just fine, um, but I do recommend 100% cotton if you can get it. And then for brushes, I have a big flat wash brush. This is a two inch uh, flat wash, and I use that just to get the water all over the paper. I have a 14, size 14 round brush by Silver Black Velvet, and a number six, a number two, and a little tiny three zero all round brushes. For... And then for my... Um... The brush that I use to dig paint out of here, I use this really cheap Crayola brush, and they come in a set of four. They're the round white Taclon brushes by Crayola. I think it's like $5 for four brushes or something. It's just a, such a good deal. And so I use it to dig the paint out. Um, and that way I'm not, you know, messing up the bristles of my good brushes so much. And I just pull it out onto my palette like that. So what I did is I printed this photograph from Pixabay and sized it to be uh, 14 inches wide and then um, I printed it so that I could get two eight and a half by 11 sheets and I just trimmed them and taped them together. I know that there are probably better ways to do that but that's just real easy for me on my color printer at home. And then to transfer the windmill shape onto my paper what I did is I traced it, and you're perfectly welcome to use the outline drawing that I have provided. Um, there's a link below for that. Or if you want to, after you have printed your reference photo, whatever size that you want it to be, what I do is I scribble on the back, and I have used a uh, 2B pencil, so it's a little bit softer than an HB and that's just giving me a nice thick layer of graphite back there. So, um, but an HB is just fine, a regular pencil. Scribble nice and dark on the back of your um, image, and I just tried to make sure that the entire windmill was covered and the horizon line, although that's not such a big deal. And after you've got that, I, I center it onto my paper, and I like to tape it at the top, just two pieces of tape, that way, as I'm tracing through, I can lift it up and see how it's going and put it back down and it will be in exactly the right place again. And then I just use my pencil and push through by tracing over the top of the picture and it transfers the graphite from the back onto the watercolor paper. I did use a little ruler to help with some of these straight lines because the windmill does have a lot of straight lines. So feel free to use a ruler if you want or you don't have to. Now that I've got my outline drawing, I made it extra dark for you to see, but one thing that you can do if you want to lighten up your lines is to use an eraser and just pick up some of that graphite and lighten them up a little bit. I like to use these, um, what are they called? Art gum eraser? I'm not sure what they're called. You know, they're these ones that are kneadable, and then you can mold them into shapes if you want to get a nice fine uh, point. You can get into small spaces with it. But also, once you have picked up your graphite, you can just kind of pull and stretch and it renews the eraser. It gets the graphite to kind of disappear off of the eraser so you can use it and reuse it. And then what I do is I just sort of push and lift. And if you look, 
you can kind of see the image of that windmill that I just stamped onto here. That's the graphite that I picked up off of my paper and it's lightening the pencil lines. So I just push hard and lift off and there's another one. And then to get rid of those, you just kind of stretch and pull and knead it and it just sort of absorbs the graphite. So anyway, if you want to lighten up your pencil lines, you just can go over them gently like this to pick up some of that extra pencil because then your pencil lines won't show through your painting quite so much. All right, and next we're going to be masking off the windmill because I wanna be able to paint the sky very loosely through here. And there are parts of the windmill that are going to be light enough that I don't want the sky color coming into there. So I may mask off this main area. These blades are already dark, darker than the sky. So I don't really need to mask them because when I paint them in, they will cover up whatever sky colors are under them. When I mask, I use a brush that I don't care about um, because your good paint brushes can get ruined by the masking fluid. And I actually have this set here, which is a really nice little set of three. And I got them, you can get them on Amazon or at Jackson's Art Supply. Uh, it's the SAA Masking Fluid Brush, and they come in small, medium, and large. And they're really nice because they're easily rinsed off. And I do use soap to protect the bristles just like it's recommended to do. So I get my masking fluid brush wet in my water. And this is just a bar of travel size soap that I picked up in the travel section of the drugstore or Target or wherever. And I get the bristles really nice and coated. And that way the masking fluid can wash off of them without gumming them up too badly. And the masking fluid that I prefer is by PBO. It's their drawing gum, it's blue. And so that way I can see where I've been and uh, it leaves it doesn't leave a mark on your paper if it's new enough I have noticed that masking fluid does tend to have a shelf life uh, which means that after a while it just sort of stops being good anymore and it can actually start to smell off which is one clue that it is going bad uh, and when I say going bad all I mean is that it can stick to your paper more than you want it to and it can actually um, leave a stain if you have tinted masking fluid like this, which is blue. So I'm just looking at my reference photo and I can see that I, I don't need to worry too much about the rest of this, um, of this windmill here, except I think I'll just go ahead and mask the bottom part of this. Okay, so that's about all we need to do for this. And I'm just going to let that dry and I would not recommend using a hair dryer or any other drying tool for masking fluid because if you heat it up, you can actually fuse it to your paper and then it's really hard to remove it without ripping the paper surface. So just let that dry and in a little bit, we'll come back and begin our sky. So we're gonna have quinacridone coral, which is a beautiful orangey pink, uh, quinacridone gold, which is kind of a almost like a dirty, warm yellow. It's sort of brownish, but it's just glowing with light when you tint it out with water. Thala Blue Red Shade is super dark, super intense, warm blue, um, which I, I like warm blues for the sky, especially during a sunset. I just find that the colors tend to be warmer in the evening and a, as the sun goes down. So those are gonna be our colors that we'll use today, and I will show you how to mix up any others that we need using these three. All right, so this is dry and now we're ready to begin the sky. So here's my setup. I figure when you're doing something like a sky, which needs to kind of be done in one go, not necessarily, but it, it helps if your paper isn't drying out on you as you go. Um, there are a couple things that can help you not to have those issues. Number one, if you're using good quality cotton paper, then it will absorb the water and hold on to it longer and it won't evaporate and dry off so quickly. So good quality paper is the very first and most important thing that you can do to help your paintings along. The other thing that you can do is to make sure that your paint is all prepared before you start anything on your paper. So I prepare the paint and that means I get it out of the pans and I get it into the palette and I dilute it to the strength that I want it to have. I've got clean water, ready to go, brushes ready to go, 
Today for the sky, I'm going to use a big flat brush. This one is a two inch flat wash brush that I'm just going to use to get the whole sky quickly wet. The quicker you can wet things down, then the quicker you can start working. And so I find that big brushes for skies and water are really helpful. Uh, for putting in the color, I'm actually using a number 14 round by Silver Black Velvet. It's a mix of natural and synthetic squirrel hair, which makes it very soft and very washy. And so I find that it really helps to get some of that loose, flowy look to the sky. And that's really all I've got that I need to have ready. So the first thing to do is to wet down the entire sky area. It is okay if you get water down below the horizon line. That is just fine. In fact, I might even just wet the whole thing because in our reference photo, the, the foreground is darker and this will help to avoid any hard lines which would look unnatural on my finished painting. So the first thing that I wanna do is just get a nice coat of water on there and let it sit for a minute or two. Uh, it's winter here, it's really dry in our house and so if things dry pretty quickly, even with this heavy paper that I have. So what I'm gonna do is let that water soak in and begin to absorb into the paper. And then it will start to dry, but that's when I'm going to put a second coat of water on. And that will kind of be my working coat. This one is the, the first coat that lets the paper get damp. And it will soak down into the in interior fibers of the paper and that way it will stay wet a little bit longer. So now I can add a little bit more water and let that soak in. Again, I'm soaking the whole paper down. So what I'm aiming for here is to have no active puddles on my paper, just evenly wet and glossy all the way across the surface. And now I'm taking my sky brush, which is my number 14 round, and I want to keep the yellows and the blues separate because otherwise they will make green. Quinacridone gold is a true yellow and it will make green. So uh, I don't want that in this sky particularly. So I'm gonna take my yellow. And now that this is wet, what I can do is dot, kind of dot this yellow, get it nice and wet so it can move. Yellows with watercolor, I've noticed yellows are kind of, uh, <laughs> antisocial colors in general. They don't seem to want to play well with others. They don't move a lot in the paint. You have to kind of push them around a little bit and that's all right. So we'll get that in there. I'm kind of doing sort of a upward outward movement with my colors. And then I'm going to rinse the brush really well and go into some of this coral. It's going to look really bold. That is all right. It will blend. One thing that you can do is actually get down and excuse if my hair gets in the way, but you can blow really hard. Into that circle of paint that is where your sunlight is and if you do that it will kind of get rid of the edges on that um, on that white spot there and I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more of this coral in here just to kind of add some some orangey texture in there. And now I can start bringing in that blue and wherever the blue is meeting the, uh, the coral, it will blend to make more of a purpley color. We'll avoid the yellow as much as we can. We also want to avoid making stripes. So, you know, skies are kind of trial and error. You kind of get them as you practice. Um,
give this a really good rinse. Things are already drying, so I'm just working as quickly as I can. I'm going to go ahead and get some purple in there. I have some spots here that I don't want, so I'm really drying out this brush, uh, damp, dabbing off the extra here, and I'm going to just try and pick that up, push it back out. You don't want to reintroduce any other big, um, you know, drops of water in here because it will, it may actually cause cauliflowers. I think I'm going to let that dry. Okay, the next step is to take off the masking fluid, and I'm also going to clean up my palette a little bit because I kind of muddied up my yellow, and I don't want to have that right now. So I'm going to clean it all up, and then I'll remove the masking fluid, and then we'll look at what we have. Okay, I'm noticing something here that I will point to with a different brush. Uh, I noticed that when I painted the masking fluid on, I actually wasn't very careful. And so I didn't, I actually painted the masking fluid up into the roof area of this um, windmill. And it's, it's created this funny hard edge above where the actual line will be. And so what I want to do is get rid of that by softening it. And what I use, you can use any paintbrush you have. If it has stiffer bristles, um, the better. So what I have been using, and I've really enjoyed this, they make scrubber brushes, uh, but they're a bit rough on my paper, I find. So this one is actually a, a synthetic mongoose brush. So it's not made with real mongoose hair, but it's a synthetic Monza by Silver brush. And it is a filbert, so it has a little rounded edge on it. And it's got short bristles it's actually made for acrylic paint and so it's stiffer than a watercolor brush but it is still gentle enough it's not like a scrubber brush and all i'm going to do is just kind of get up in here and wiggle the bristles a little bit to kind of soften the paint edge there and i'm also realizing that i'm sort of muddying up my pencil line but that will be okay i'm just going to dab it off with a paper towel and i'm just softening this hard edge because then it won't show so much when I go to paint. So that area is softer than it was and I think that I can cover it up pretty well with darker paint later. Okay now we're going to start on the main building of the windmill and I'm going to do this little background building first and then let it dry. So in the reference photo, it's kind of hidden behind grasses. And I may or may not do that in the final painting. But I can see that because of the shadow being cast on it, um, the way the sun is coming in from behind, it's a little darker than the main body of the windmill. And it's a rectangular structure instead of a rounded cylinder. And so um, the, the color is pretty consistent all the way across. It's more of an orangey red color right here, an orangey. I, I can do that with my Quin Gold and my Quin Coral. So I'm going to just paint that side of the building in and let it dry. And then we'll come over here and work on the shaded cylinder uh, form of the windmill building. My paint is all set up on my palette right over there so I've got my coral a little diluted mix of that a diluted mix of my blue I mixed the two together to make a purple and then I've mixed the orange and the I mean the coral and the gold to make an orange right there so that's what I'm going to be using for the building on the side here I'm rinsing and dabbing my brush, rinsing it off, dabbing it in on the towel, and then I can kind of soften this edge down below so that it just blends onto the 
into the grasses underneath. I don't need it to have a hard edge because in the painting, in the, in the photo, we don't see the bottom of that building or how far down it goes. So I'll just soften that off. And I'm going to dry that up. Okay, now for the main body of the windmill, I can see that it is in shadow. It's got a rounded shape to it, which means that the, the darker side is going to fade over into the lighter side. So I'm going to be using my purple that I've mixed and a little bit of that diluted rose. And we're just going to wet the whole thing down. And then we're going to paint them both in and let them blend together in the middle. And I'm not going to worry about this blade right here. I'm just going to paint right over it because that is darker than the white paint on this windmill and um, and so it will get easily covered up by darker paint later so again i'm using this number six round brush by princeton and it's a nice synthetic sable so that means it's springy and it has a good uh, snap to it i'm just going to wet down this shape and we're going to soften off this edge also so i'm just going to bring it down into the grass but I'm being pretty careful with my water right up to the top of this bottom line on the roof there, right through the windmill blades, not worrying about them, and right over to the edge. Remember, wherever you put water, that's where your paint will go. So you want to be as careful with your water as you would be with paint. Okay, I'm looking at it from an angle myself and I can see that it's evenly wet. So now I'm going to go in with my purple and drop it in on this side and just let it bleed its way across. I'll be very careful at the edge and just let it go across the paper to about the middle. And that is where I'm going to come in with my coral. So I've rinsed off my brush and now I'm picking up some of this diluted coral and we're painting that in on this side. And it looks pretty intense right now, but it will, it will uh, fade away as, I mean, it will lighten up as it dries. and let them just blend in the middle there. I'm gonna dab off the excess water from my brush and just come up here and tidy up this edge with just a damp brush. It kind of pulls the pigment from the painted area right up to the edge. And I'm using cold press paper and not rough, and so it doesn't have quite as many bumps and valleys as rough paper would, but it does have some, and so I do like to tidy up my edges if I can. And then again, I'm going to take my, my damp brush and just kind of wiggle it along the bottom to make sure that the bottom is fading down. And then I'm going to dry that off. Now that it's dried, I can see what the values of my paint actually are because watercolor paint dries lighter than it looks when you first put it down. So I can see now that this edge is a lot lighter than I want it to be because it's not standing out from the sky as much as it should. If I look at the reference photo, I can see right here that this is a stark contrast. There's much darker paint or pigment right here, and then the sky is lighter behind it. So their sky is more orange than mine. Mine ended up purpler and pinker right here. Everybody's sky will be different, so you just have to judge yours. But I would like my windmill to be darker here so that it actually looks like a solid building and not just kind of a, a part of the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and use maybe a bluer shade of purple. I'll add a little blue to the purple that I mixed. And I'm going to re-wet this area and just go over it again, especially with that purple on that side. Now I'm softening up this edge one more time. Okay. 
and I'll dry that off. All right, so what I'm going to be working on next are these sections of the uh, blades on the windmill. I'm not sure what that is. I'm assuming it catches the wind. I'm not sure how windmills work, I have to confess. I don't understand why these parts seem to be, um, you know, not solid. You would think that you want the wind to catch all the parts of the windmill, but these blades seem to be solid only halfway up. So I don't know what that is, if it's wood or what that is, but it seems to be kind of a brownish orange color. So I'm going to mix that as best as I can, um, something similar anyway. What I've done is I've taken my coral and I put in a little bit of this orange that I had before to orange it up, and then I added a tiny bit of purple. So what I have now is this color, which is sort of a dusky brownish pink. And so it's sort of orangey brown. And so that's what I'm going to use on my windmill blades right now. And I'll get in here for you. And then we'll just paint them in as they show up. There are some shadows on them a little bit down below here at the bottom. So I may use some of my purple just to kind of add some shadow into the parts at the, at the lower end of them. Okay, what I'm doing here, I can see that I have painted over the line a little, so I'm taking my, my paper towel before it dries, and I am dabbing that off. Before it dries, you can do that. Uh, I could probably clean it up after it dried as well, but I just wanted to try and get that corrected as soon as possible. Now, I'm going to do this lower one right here, this one right there, but I'm noticing on the, the painting that that blade is a little more purple than these because it's down lower and it's not getting hit by the sun quite as much. These are more uh, pink, more orangey pink, and this one is a little more purple. So all I'm going to do is just add a little bit more purple into this orangey mix and just kind of knock it back a little bit. And then I'll do that on here. Soften off the edge on that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna let those dry and then I'll come back and do some more detail. Okay, looking back at the reference photo again. So I'm going to be working now with a very small brush and I'm getting out my Number three, zero. You could use a zero or a two zero or anything smaller, but just something really tiny that has a nice fine point. And I'm gonna be working on this dark stuff that's on the blades. And also I'm gonna be painting in the roof. That one I may use a larger brush for that. Um, my, my number two probably. Uh, and what I'm noticing about those areas is that they are a dark brown. And so I need to mix that. So with brown, we know that brown is warmer than black or gray, so it's going to have more orange in it, more red and yellow than blue when you're mixing your, your primary colors to make, uh, to make a brown. So what I'm going to just have to tinker around a little bit, and that's just the way it goes when you're mixing. I'm going to start with my coral. I'm going to add quite a bit of my gold to make an orange. And I'm trying to keep this kind of thick. Um, all right, and then I'm gonna come in there with just a tiny bit of blue. Not a lot, because phthalo blue is very, very strong. So there it is already getting very strong. And it's turning a little green, but it's okay. Just bear with it. There we go. It's kind of a greenish brown right now. So I'm going to add, what's the opposite? Let's see. We're going to add a little bit of red to that, because if I add yellow, it'll just go even greener, right? Add a little more red to warm that up. That's looking pretty good. 
Now I'll get my paper out and test that for you. It's a nice warm brown. If you have burnt umber, you can just use burnt umber. You don't need to do all this mixing. If you have a convenient brown, just go ahead. I find that mixing my own colors is a fun challenge and it also makes your painting more harmonious because all of the different shades in your painting are related to one another if they come from the same color mixes. So I have a number two round brush right here and I'm going to use that to go in and paint the roof and I'm going to keep my reference photo pretty close by because I know I have to paint around some of these bars since they are lighter. I also know that I didn't paint this one in uh, and that's okay. I'm going to come back to it. It was just an oversight. That is fine. But I am going to try and be real careful when I'm painting in this roof area. So I'm getting my brush full of brown paint. Um, and let's just get in into it here. So we'll paint in brown. And I'm going to do some painting carefully around these areas. Switching down to my smaller brush here so that I can do the tiny flag on the top. Same dark brown. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, this is all dry here, and I'm just looking at some of the detail on this reference photo. Um, I'm noticing, and it's okay if our painting is different from the reference photo. We don't wanna be a slave to the reference, right? Uh, but because of the light coming in on this side, I'm noticing that this little, um, what are these called? I'm just gonna call them bars, I don't know. Anyway, they're lighter than the background roof. The roof is very dark and these are lighter. So I did leave them lighter on my painting. I, I did not paint them, in fact, I actually forgot to paint this one in, but they are lighter. Uh, however, they do need to have some, um, some uh, darker stripe at the bottom. If you notice here, it's just a little bit darker at the very bottom of this one here. And then there are just some shadows here and some lines on it that I want to add on. I will add some of these some of these uh, vertical lines onto the blades of um, the windmill. I'm also going to use the lifting technique since this band comes across horizontally and it's not yet there on my painting. So I'm going to use lifting by getting a damp brush and just wiping across that horizontal uh, ring here and lifting it off with a paper towel just to give it a little bit more form because as you can see on mine it's all one solid color right now so I need for that a paper towel and I'm going to use my I'm going to lift up so I have room to work here okay so I'm using my number three zero round I'm getting it wet and I'm making sure that I don't have any drops hiding on the ferrule because that happened before and then I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to paint a line of water that goes across the top of where that band would be and just dab it 
and you can see that lifts off an area that will help to define that edge which comes across to there so again a little bit of water on my brush paint a strip here dab it off we can do that a couple times just to give it a little bit of a wood grain texture using a clean piece of my towel each time so that I'm not reintroducing this brown paint onto any other part of the painting. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to go in with the same little tiny brush and some darker paint and I am going to be painting wherever I see dark lines here so I'll start with this circle this is um, the center of the windmill and I'll paint that dark um, I'll go ahead and paint some of these darker areas in and I'll make I'm gonna make a reddish brownish color that kind of matches this part here so that I can paint the crossbars that go in here so again for mixing that I'm taking my brown that's okay to keep that there I'm just gonna get a little bit more of this coral color maybe I'll just put it right down there so you can watch me mix a lot of this painting is about mixing colors anyway and so then we're just gonna dilute it add a little brown to it add a lot of water bring over a little brown if we need to it doesn't have to be a perfect match but it does need to be kind of a brownish red okay that looks about right so I'll let that be rinse off the brush and come right back over here okay I'm getting that brownish red which I had been using before to paint this piece in. If it looks too pink, just add a tiny bit more brown to your mix until you get something that sort of matches the others. All right, I am also going to continue out these lines. Okay, I'm gonna have to let that dry because if I paint this center circle while this bar is still wet, it will bleed up into that area. So I'm just going to dry that off really quickly. Little more of this reddish brown just to uh, paint in these, these crossbars. Okay, a little dark brown here for this part. Not entirely sure why I left that out. And then some nice dark, dark brown, concentrated brown, I should say, for the underside of this circle. This would be entirely in shadow. It's kind of a crescent shape. It is the underside of that center rounded shape there. So I'm going to let that totally dry and then I'll come in and do some a uh, little bit lighter brown for the middle. Okay, here we go for the middle of the windmill. Trying to keep that nice circle shape. Okay. All right. I'm going to also take my purple and my number two brush, and I'm going to go back to my purple, and I'm just getting a little bit of a, a diluted mix here. It's very watery. 
on my number two, wipe off some of the excess. And I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna try and get a little bit of a shadow under the roof line, just painting a straight line across. Not onto the blade of the windmill, skipping that part. Straight over to here. Okay, I'm gonna let that all dry. Okay, back to the reference photo. I'm just looking carefully at some of these blades. If you will notice, there is a, like I said, a darker shadow along this, um, it's almost like a rib that goes straight down. So I'm gonna paint that in, and then I'm going to get started on painting these, all this little tiny detail across each blade here. And it, I won't need to do exactly like the painting. I mean, this, this is a lot of detail here. So we don't need to paint every single little tiny bar, but we just wanna give the suggestion that that's what that is. And um, you know, use our finest brush and our darkest paint and just do as much as we can. We're not gonna really stress out about counting each one and making sure it's exactly right. We're just going to do our best and get um, a lot of that detail in there. Trying to keep our lines as straight as we can, but again, not stressing out about it too much. All right, number three zero round, going in over here. I think what I'm gonna do with it, this this main one down the middle, um, I'm going to wet it carefully, even though it's very tiny. I'm just going to wet that center line so that I can get a dark edge on one side of it without it being too hard of a line. Okay, so it's wet, just with clear water. Now I'm gonna take this dark, dark paint that I have that's dark brown, and I'm getting some on my brush and I'm just gonna go along the outside of that. And again, fading it all out as it comes down to the bottom. Because this whole area down here is going to be covered up with grasses down in here. So I just want the grasses to be able to come up over that area without it having a hard line. Okay, so that's all right. And I'm going to go ahead and add some darkness up here as well. I'm going to dampen my brush and just soften this edge a little bit. Okay. We'll do the underside of this one. Paint that in and dampen the brush. Just soften that edge a little bit. It's such a tiny area. It really is not a huge deal, but sometimes it's all in the details. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on this side. Get a nice dark paint on my brush. Now, I don't know if you can see this. This is what I'm talking about. There is a little drip of water right there and it will fall off and land on my painting and cause problems. 
So we get that off of there. Dampen off the brush and soften that edge just ever so slightly, just by wiggling the bristles along the edge of it. Okay. All right. I think that's pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the outline and the little crossbars on, on these windmill blades. I'll start up here. Tiny brush, stand it up on its tip, straight down, going for a fine line here, barely touching the paper. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and do we're trying to keep them parallel to these lines that are already there so they kind of all stay the same direction and the same distance from each other. It's okay if this one's closer to the blade. I mean, that is how it actually is in the reference photo, so that's fine. And the lines do continue down into here. All right, pretty good. We have the same thing happening on these actual ribs there just a little bit. Same thing down here. Okay. Let's go to this one. You know what? I'm going to dry this because if I try to work on this side, I'm going to get my hand on that and it's going to smudge it. So I'm just going to pause here and dry that off. Okay, back to my number three zero round. Just continuing the process. I'm going to darken this line down the middle here. And just fade that away. Going in with my little bit of purple and just going right under this roof a little bit here. Okay. All right, I've had some lunch, I've had a little bit of coffee here, and now I'm ready to go uh, get started on the grasses that are in the foreground. So I'm gonna mix up a few different colors for that. 
a um, little bit of green and some browns. So I'll show you how I do that mixing and let's get started. All right, so here's our painting so far. It's looking pretty good. We just need to be adding some of the foreground grasses here. And that is some of the darkest elements in the painting. So we've got a real dark area over here. Now, on my reference photo, it looks greenish to me. You can maybe not tell in the camera. Um, but if you go on Pixabay and look for this reference photo, there's a little bit of green on this side and also some right in here. So we're gonna mix up a nice dark brownish green. Also, there are some light and dark browns. And then there is this yellowish color that has these, um, I don't know if these are flowers uh, sticking up off the landscape. So <clears throat> I'm not looking to make the detail as photorealistic as it is in the photograph. Uh, I want it to just be kind of loose and painterly. And I'm hoping that we can help the paint to do some of the work for us by creating some textures down here with salt and water drops and help to create some of that grassy texture ourselves. Also, the other thing that I have uh, been loving about my Princeton Aqua Elite brushes is that it already has a very pointed tip on the end of the brush, not the bristle end, but the top of the brush has a pointed tip. So I'm gonna use that to score in some finer grass detail coming up off the top here. And so we'll do that together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mix up my colors. All right, over on the far side over here, I'm gonna get working on a bit of a green. So I've got my Quinn Gold. Get a nice darkish mix of that. Quin Gold is a really intense glowing color and it can go from kind of a mustardy orange all the way up to just the, the lightest, most glowing of yellows. So I love it because it's very versatile. And if you mix it with a warm blue like this, uh, you will get a beautiful olive green. With Ultramarine, you can mix it up and it will make um, the color Undersea Green, which is by Daniel Smith. So here I've got way too much blue. Oh my goodness. Not to worry, we will fix that. But here it's a beautiful turquoise color, so there is that, but that's not the one we need. Rinse that blue off really, really well. Thala blue is powerful. Get some more gold. And this is good because we're gonna end up with a nice thick wash which will go well into our dark foreground. All right so here's my green and when I th uh, put it on here you're going to see that it's a nice natural dark olive green color that I can use for my grasses. So there's one and I'll work on some browns next. Okay, so I have my colors mixed up. I've got a dark green, a brownish yellow, and a dark brown. And then I may or may not use this, which I used before already. I just wanted to have a nice big mixture of that ready to go. So here is our foreground. And I'm gonna wet it using my big sky brush. My water is really dirty right now, but that's okay because uh, the whole foreground is going to be dark. And if I wet it, I can work without worrying about it drying on me. So I'm just using my big 14 round, which I used for the sky. And get it all the way across, right up to the horizon line. And I will also be flicking the grasses up over that. Now again, I'm gonna use this same brush and I'm loosely looking at the reference, although it's just gonna be kind of a big textured wash that I do. Um, and I'm just noticing that it's, you know, of course we have the sun over here, so there is maybe a little bit more light on this side, but we can just add what we need to with all of this stuff here. So I'm gonna go in with some gold, add some of that brownish gold that I mixed and go straight in with some brown down in the bottom. Get some green. I'm not even washing my brush in between. I'm just grabbing and going. 
wash it all over so we get a good wet coating there. I'm going to bring in some dark along the bottom. Add a little more green coming in from this side. We just really want a nice mixture of colors. I'm going to go back in with my dark yellow and just kind of add it up here. Bit more dark. Using up all that paint I just mixed. And I know that my painting is quite a bit brighter and lighter than the reference photo, but that is all right. Grab some more of that green, just a little bit over here. And now I'm going to take the end of my number six, which is the pointy end, and I'm going to just start scratching up some grasses, just flicking them up out of there. I'm going to try and get out of the way of myself and zoom in for you. this dries too much. And some people use a palette knife to do this and you sure can. This is just pretty easy to do with your end of your paintbrush. I am going to get some of that yellow brown mix and kind of just push up this horizon line a little so that it's not quite so even of a line because it's looking a little bit straight for my taste. I'm going to splash in some water just for some of that texture. Just my water from my rinse bucket. Splash it in while the paint is still damp. If I get it up into the sky, I'm going to quickly dab that off just so that it doesn't leave a watermark up there. And then I'm also just going to put in a little bit of some table salt, just a few down here, and let that start to create some texture in the foreground. I may come back over later with a darker wash, but that's the beginning of it. So we'll let that dry and see what we end up with. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. And I think what I'm going to try and do is darken up this area, this whole grassy area, just by painting another dark glaze over the top and trying to get some more grasses coming up uh, just to break up this straight line a little more. So let's mix up some more brown and then we'll give it a go. All right, to mix up our brown, once again, I'm starting with my coral. And I'll add my Quinn Gold to make my orange. Just pour some of that right in. And then we'll do a very tiny touch of Thalo Blue. And add more as we need to. And now it's looking nice and dark. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use my number two, uh, two inch flat wash brush just so that I can try and wet this grass area without disturbing the textures that I've created already. So I'm just gently bringing it across and wetting that area without doing too much, 
you know, back and forth movement of the brush here because I don't want to disturb a lot of the things I've already done. And just kind of let that begin to soak in. All right, there are puddles on this surface. And so to get them off of there without rubbing the brush on them, I'm just going to tilt my board up. A little bit and let all that extra water run down to the bottom and I'm just going to run my paper towel along the bottom of the tape there and just keep soaking up the extra water as it drips down let's see how we're doing here okay <clears throat> Now what I want to do is I want I want an extra bead of paint to form at the top edge where the grass meets the horizon because I think what happened last time was I was trying to scratch up the texture and there wasn't much paint to work with. It just dried too quickly. So I'm going to tilt my board up here. I'm going to use my roll of painter's tape and just stick it under my board, under the edge there, so that it kind of runs, everything will run upward. And that way, when I'm using my paint, it will start to form a bead. I'm just going to experiment with this. It'll start to form a bead of uh, paint up near the top. So I'm going to come in here with my brown that I mixed before and just begin painting some darker paint over the, over the paint that I already did. Rinse off my big brush, and I'm going to use again the pointy end to begin flicking some of these grasses up. This time I think it's working just a little better because I've got some extra paint down here on the edge of my horizon. So I probably should have done this to begin with, and if you're watching this video the whole way through before you begin, you can learn from my experience and just... Make sure that you have extra moisture at the top of the horizon line when you begin scratching up some of this grass. All right, that is good, I think. I like that a lot better. I don't know if I'm going to really put in any of these actual flowers. I think I'll just add some more dark. That's all I need to do. A little more dark in here with that brown that I mixed. All right, we'll let that dry. And I think that's it. So we'll take the tape off. And there's our finished painting. Thanks so much for watching with me. If you enjoyed this video, please do all the normal stuff. Like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And please stay tuned for my next video. Bye-bye.